answer. Because you are that, you are capable. You are gifted and you are so unique. All of the things that you may hate about yourself are your strengths. It's okay to be soft. It's okay to be opinionated. It's okay to be different. And it's so okay to just be like The world awaits to receive you. Okay, I'm going to show you a little bit of this interview on CNN with Ice Cube. It's no shock that Ice Cube got some heat for deciding uh, to work with the Trump administration. So if anybody got a problem with that, it seems like a personal problem. Well, here's the problem, and it is very personal, personal as you know, for a lot of people of color. Because they'll say, well, why would you pick Trump when he says there's no such I'm thing as systemic nobody. inequality? Say I'm that? not picking nobody. He's the president. But why He's do you think he'd want to do something for the community when he says there's no such thing as systemic inequality? I don't know what he want to do. I just know what the man said. I know what he said to the country. Uh, I've never met Donald Trump. Who knows what's really going to happen uh, after November 3rd? Nobody knows from each side. We're all hoping that candidates keep their campaign promises. So that's just it. Our next guest is Ice Cube. If you know anything about him, and you probably do, you know he started his career rapping in defiance about police presence uh, and the realities of inner city life. And he got political with his songs as well recently during the Trump administration, most recently in 2018. Here's a taste. Arrest the president. You got the evidence. That is Russian intelligence. Now we see a shift. Now he wants to work with President Trump. Here's what the president had to say most recently about Black Lives Matter. The first time I ever heard of Black Lives Matter, I said, that's such a terrible term because it's such a racist term. It's a term that sows division between blacks and whites and everybody else. And it's a very bad term for blacks. But they were very angry. It's a Marxist organization. With all that going on, and how the president continues to speak about there being no systemic inequality. It's no shock that Ice Cube got some heat for deciding uh, to work with the Trump administration. He wants to deal with it. I want to understand it. So, so should you. So here is Ice Cube on prime time. Thank you for taking the opportunity, brother. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me, uh, Chris. Uh, your lead ins are a little misleading. How so? Um, well, the platinum plan is not my plan. I came up with the contract with Black America, um, and I didn't run to go work with any campaign. Both campaigns contacted me. Both campaigns wanted to talk to me about the contract with Black America. One campaign said, we love what you have, but let's really dig into it after the election. And one campaign said, we love what you have. Uh, what, do you mind talking to us about it? And that's what I did. So I didn't run to nobody. And uh, so that was real misleading to me. Um, well, I didn't say you ran you know, to anybody. I said that you had taken a pivot. Well, you, you, you said I ran over to the Trump team instead of the Biden team. That's just not true. Uh, well, but you are working with me. the Trump team instead I, of the Biden team and people are giving you heat for it. What do you say to them? Well, I'm willing to work with both teams, but I'm just working with whoever is willing to work with me. So the Trump campaign came to me and asked me to explain to them some of the uh, contract with Black America. That's what I did. I'm not playing no more of these games, these political games. We're not part of a team. We have very broad problems, especially the wealth gap in this country when it comes to Black Americans. So I'm going to whoever's in power and I'm going to speak to them about our problems specifically. I'm not going there talking about minorities. I'm not going there talking about people of color or diversity or none of that stuff. I'm going there for black Americans, the ones who are the descendants of slaves. And that's what I'm going to talk to anybody who's in power with that. So if anybody got a problem with that, it seems like a personal problem. 
Well, here's the problem, and it is very personable, personal, as you know, for a lot of people of color, because they'll say, well, why would you pick Trump when he says there's no such I'm thing as systemic nobody. inequality? Say I'm that? not picking nobody. He's the president. But why He's do you think president. he'd want to do something for the community when he says there's no such thing as systemic inequality? I don't know what he want to do. I just know what the man said. I know what he said to the country. Uh, I've never met Donald Trump. Um, and I, uh, so I don't know what he's going to do. I just know what he said he was going to do. So both of them have a plan. Both of them say they're going to do something. Um, and who knows what's really going to happen uh, after November 3rd. Nobody knows from each side. We're all hoping that candidates keep their campaign promises. So that's just it. So let's look at it this way. I think that you're right to be skeptical. Let's start with the Democrats, because even though there is a traditional connection between uh, black voters and the Democrats, you could also say you've been let down or forgotten uh, by Democrats in a lot of situations that would have mattered. Uh, then you say, all right, so then I'll, what's one side, what makes one side better than the other? That's where you get in trouble, uh, which is, do you really think that Donald Trump can be trusted as much as you could trust Joe Biden? Uh, I don't think I, I, I'm not trusting any of them. I'm just going by action. That's all I'm going by. I'm not going by words, I'm not going by rhetoric, rhetoric, not going by media spin, not going by none of that. You know, I'm not uh, I'm not on nobody's team. I'm right. not on team blue, not on team red. So then I have that wrong. Hold so on. I'm an independent person. And I believe that's what black people need to do is become independent. And we need to get something for our vote. You know, that may not happen, but it's it's going to happen. It's got to happen. It's got to happen. Uh, nothing changes if nothing changes. I, I, I Look, if I had brought you here to fight with you, you, you would have known it. What I'm saying is I think I did get it wrong and I want to make sure I get it right. So saying you're working with the Trump team is wrong. What you did was when they asked to talk to you about it, you said, yes, if Biden had asked to talk to you about it now, you would have gone to them the same way. It's not about you choosing anything. It's you working with everybody who's got a chance of doing anything. I'm right? working with whoever's in power. Yeah, I'll work with both. Whoever's in power, I'm going to work with. So whoever wins, they'll, they'll uh, hear from me. Okay, so you know, I'm frequently. glad you came to clear it up. So Ice Cube is not with the Trump campaign. He's just given his ideas, and anybody who wants to do something with him, fine. Do you believe they are doing anything with your ideas? Uh, I believe, you know, they, they looked at the contract with Black America and they updated their um, plan. But it's their plan. You know, I have my plan. My plan is broad. It goes beyond the, the public sector. It goes into the private sector. Uh, banks, um, you know, even uh, the movie industry. So we got to deal with a lot of different, um, I think, uh, companies, corporations, and even government when it comes to solving this problem. I believe it's a, it's a non-bipartisan uh, problem. Uh, I believe it's a bipartisan problem when it comes to the issues, when it comes to uh, blacks in America and what's going on. It's not a Democrat problem. It's not for them to solve. It's not for the Republicans to solve. It's for both of them to solve. Um, they do it when it comes to debt ceiling. They do it when it comes to getting us in wars. They seem to come together when it's something that really affects America. And I don't think nothing affects America more than the situation that black Americans find ourselves in. This country is coming apart at the seams and it's not going to come together after January 3rd, no matter who's the president, unless we deal with this wealth gap. You have the economics. Uh, all of it extends uh, from poverty, which is an extension of opportunity, uh, which is an extension of a system that doesn't give equal opportunity, and you see it everywhere. Hiring, education, finance, uh, all of it. So acutely, we've been looking at uh, what happens when policing goes wrong in communities. It doesn't give you concern that the president has handled police violence the way he has in terms of his commitment to work on any of the issues that you think are important? We've been dealing with police violence in this country from day one. So police violence is just part of our life here. So, you know, the thing is this, once we get some capital, we'll be treated better. This is a capitalistic society. True. 
And if you ain't got no money, you see how people get treated on the streets when they ain't got no money. Not just you money, know, wealth. The, wealth. You got to be able to build up wealth. wealth within the community. Yeah, you know, to put it in uh, greater terms. But, you know, at the b bottom line is, you know, uh, dollars bring dignity. And mm -hmm. so uh, everybody in America knows that. When you got a little more money, they treat you a little better. So we need to close this wealth gap. Um, you know, you got people, you know, making a families making one hundred twenty thousand dollars or worth one hundred twenty thousand dollars, and you got black families worth two hundred dollars. That this is just it's uh it's just an enormous wealth gap that keeps growing. It's not getting smaller. Uh, do the you know do the research and you'll see this is the problem in America. Um, it's because black people have no capital. We own half of a point when it comes to all the wealth in America, half of a point, 13.5% people living off half of a point. We cannot survive in America another 100 years living like this. The issue is real. The problem is properly identified. They do have access, of capital, access to capital of about $500 billion, but it doesn't say that it would be earmarked within the Trump plan for communities of color. Uh, but we'll see what you can get done, and I make you this promise. Uh, not just because I'm a fan, but the issue matters. As you learn and as you see action and reaction or inaction, you have a place on this show to discuss it. That's a guarantee. I appreciate it, Chris. Yeah, I'll be back to discuss and let you know what I know, what I find out. But I'm going to give it to you straight up. It's the only I'm way I take it. Side. It doesn't go well any other way on this show. Ice Cube, I wish right. you the best. Stay healthy. Be well. All right, man, take it easy. All right, we'll be right back. No. No? No. You don't even seem that political. No, I'm not really. I'm pretty much, you know, um, just want to do right by the people, you know. So if that comes through political means, that comes through the private sector, wherever it comes, you know, uh, I'm down to work with whoever's down to do something right for the people. So I remember reading you say something along the lines of, I didn't vote for Trump. I'm not a Trump voter. You actually attacked Trump at one point, but you were willing to meet with Trump. Do you think that crossed the line? I think some people didn't like that, um, but I think it's idiotic. You know, enemies meet. <laughs> right. You know, they, they talk. I'm pretty sure there's some communication between Russia and the Ukraine right now. Somebody's on the phone talking to somebody trying to, um, to come up with a, a solution. Um, so we just got to talk. That's the only way we're going to work this out. You know, I know when the talking stops, the fighting starts. You know, a lot of people, they, you know, think I'm a, you know, Republican. I'm, I'm a right winger um, just because I was willing to speak to the Trump organization, administration, I mean, and I was willing to speak with the Biden administration as well, you know. Um, Have you? One guy in the administration, but it didn't go anywhere. You know, it was basically a, you know, take my temperature kind of call. We'll get to it, like, but, you know, they, they never got to it or never planned to. As a matter of fact, the guy left the administration. So, you know, after after talking to him for a year or so, he was gone, and then, you know, we were left really with no one to to continue the conversations. What do you think of Biden? I don't think he's given the people who put him in exactly what they thought they were going to get from him. Um, but his most loyal voters, according to the polls, anyway, are black voters, particularly black women. Mm -hmm. And those numbers don't seem to change. So no matter what happens or doesn't happen. So do you expect they ever will change? You know, whether they become independents and not vote for anybody who's not bringing it. You know, it's like people want your vote. Um, they have to do something to earn it. If they don't earn it, why are you going down there and pulling that lever? Because the other side hates you. That's the that's the pitch they make. 
we, we may suck, but the other side hates you. Um, you're supposed to dance with the person you brought. Yeah. You know? And the person that, 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 that brought you to the dance, you guys are supposed to dance together. And if that doesn't happen, you got to go find another dancing partner before the night is up and the music stops. What do you think of Kamala Harris? I mean, obviously she's a great politician to be able to become the vice president of the country. Um, I don't know how effective she is at her job. I love this tour you've been on too, man, because it feels like this is authentic Ice Cube, right? And it's like, I mean, <laughs> yeah. you've always been authentic, yeah. but it feels like, you know, I'm, 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 I'm railing against the machine. So I was gonna ask who, out of the gatekeepers, are the gatekeepers worse in sports, Hollywood, or the music? music yeah. I think they all around. You know, I don't think it's, I don't think it's worse than any other, uh, you know, I guess profession. You know, I think there's, you know, people that try to make sure you stay in your lane. Mm -hmm. And um, if you look like you're getting out of your lane, um, you know, sometimes they'll watch you. Sometimes they'll put guardrails up and sometimes they'll actually put a gate up <laughs> and make sure you go no further. So, um, you know, that's what we have happening here. And this is just my testimony. Um, but we all got them and we all got to mm -hmm. figure out who they are. We don't have to let them know what we know who they are. Mm -hmm. We just got to figure out how to get around that gate. You know, I used to hop fences when I was young all the time. A fence or a gate never stopped me from going where I wanted to go. Which, so, which one is more difficult for you? Because you, you, you've seen them when you first started NWA. You've Every seen industry. Them, yeah. Yeah, when, yeah. when you first started in, in the entertainment industry doing films and now you see them now. Which one is the most difficult? None of them. They all easy. You just got to go at them. You can't go, you know, you can't try to nice, you know, nice guy it mm -hmm. all the time, you know. Um, all of them fold like a chair. And um, this one will too. But it was clear that you were always about, where's my money? Where's my contract? How mm -hmm. come I'm not this? What gave you that business mind early on when especially even artists today are still not on it with all the knowledge that we know and everything that we see. You can I mean Google so many things. What gave you that business mind so early on? Um, watching, watching, you know, people I know and like, you know, have to kind of beg for their money, you know, like, <laughs> and I ain't gonna say no names, but I've seen people that really, you know, can I get paid? Can I get paid? You know, and, and it was just, I saw that at, you know, 14, 15 years old, um, hanging around the industry, just had my antennas up. And, you know, when it was time for me to do records, um, you know, I was in, in, a, in a stage where I was happy, you know what I mean? I'm ready to go, you know, I finally get to live my dream mm -hmm. and do music on, and put it on wax and put it out and see if I'm good enough, you know? And so um, I had a publicist who, who later became my manager Later, by, lady by the name of Pat Charbonnet. And if you see the Friday movie, she helped me produce that movie, mm -hmm. uh, Friday. You'll see her name on it. But she was the publicist for NWA. Mm -hmm. And um, I would show up to the interviews early. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm like, you know, if you can't be on time, be early. Mm -hmm. So I would show up t to all the interviews early. Sometimes them dudes wouldn't even show up. Mm -hmm. Like, easy on his way, dry on his way. But they never showed up so I'll be the only one there so so we got it we got to chop it up and she was basically like do you know who Jerry Heller is and I'm like no who is that well you need to look him up because you just got to watch me how's your paperwork you know she starts just have you signed a contract with, with them yet and I'm like nah you know I ain't signed nothing and she was like you need to make sure you get an attorney before you sign anything with them and so I wanted to put her in the movie but it just wasn't enough real estate you know mm -hmm. people just don't know how hard it is to actually put 10 years into two hours mm -hmm. but but at the end of the day um she hooked me up with a with a lawyer by the name of Michael Ashburn mm -hmm. and um 
and we strategized, you know, how we were going to see if we were being treated fair mm -hmm. by Ruthless. And, and so, you know, from seeing that, I, I knew, I knew this was show business. Mm. So the music and, and, and the production is one thing, but, but it's really all about the business that that determines if you're going to be happy with the outcome. Mm -hmm. And you know, I want to go back to what you were talking about with the the record labels, right? Cuz you said it's a it's it's they make songs by committee. Yes. Cuz I always think to myself, well couldn't the artists change that if they just simply stop making the rap that has the criminal intent, but you saying that they're being pushed to yeah, make these kind of records. Yeah. Man, a long time ago. It's been happening forever. Mm -hmm. Some of your <laughs> some of the songs that you love, some of the MCs you love, you know, it was done by committee. It wasn't, you know, a man with a pen and a mic. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? That's me. I'm a man with a pen and a mic. Yeah. Meaning, was, was, was NWA ever, you think they was ever part of the big corporate agenda to push negative content? Yeah, they were. But not, not a willing, knowing participant. Mm -hmm. We thought our music was going to be underground. We didn't make our music big. Mm-hmm. You know, we did not make our music blow up. Damn. We just did it. And we thought it was going to be underground, dirty street records. Mm -hmm. We thought our records was going to be sold with the Richard Pryor comedy albums and, and Red Fox and the, mm -hmm. you know, dirty Dolomite records mm -hmm. and shit. That's what we thought. So, um, you know, we didn't have a clue that it was going to blow up until it, it blew up. You know, I, I think, um, you know, one was MTV banning Straight out of Compton video. Mm -hmm. Another was a, the letter from the FBI. Those are two things that, that started to just blow the group up. But we didn't blow ourselves up. You know, everybody blame us. But we didn't, we didn't do it. You know, we was um, doing music. We actually had stopped worrying about the industry as much. We was re basically doing music that people in our neighborhood were like. Mm -hmm. So we were like, yo, let's just do the shit we know. I keep cussing. So I don't know if so I'm <laughs> But, but um, let's just keep doing what we've been doing. Or no, let's just, let's, let's just do what we know is going to work around here so we can be at least neighborhood stars. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. We can at least you know, get love in the hood. So that was our uh, purpose. And and it blew up. All right. I, I wanted to ask you too, you know, when you um when you started getting involved in politics the way you did during the last election, did, and, and just being willing to engage with Republicans, mm -hmm. you know, did that cost you in Hollywood? I don't know. I, um, I don't measure that stuff, you know what I mean? I mm -hmm. just know. You know, when you're black, things might not go right. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's all I know. When you're black, things might be set up perfect, but it still might not go right. Mm -hmm. So be ready for that. Man, I don't know. You know, um, I don't really think about, I don't think about it like that. I just think about it's hard to to to, to get anybody that's in your heart out of there. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So if people got me in their hearts, you ain't going to be able to cancel me. Mm -hmm. It's going to be hard to get get me out of there. Mm -hmm. uh, if I'm not in your heart, it's probably going to be easier <laughs> to mm -hmm. cancel me. So it's it's really not on me. You know, I don't know. Is there an Illuminati Ice Cube? <laughs> You've uh, been around a long time. Probably so. Yeah. You know, I don't know none of them. None of them tell me, hey, I'm Illuminati. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't, um, I don't participate in none of that, so I don't know about it. You know, I seem like it's there, but who knows? Mm -hmm. So how do you beat the gatekeepers then? Because I feel like we're in an era where there's no gates. I feel like everybody can just do their own thing. So how do you, how do you beat the gatekeepers that still exist? Um, I think you... You persist. You don't let them stop you. Mm -hmm. You know they there. You know everybody that that's in front of the gate. 
ain't always paying attention. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, I've 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 dug security and hit the fence before and got in. Mm-hmm. So I'll do it again. It's 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 like I'm not used to going through the front door anyway. Mm-hmm. So if I, if if the front door is is locked, then we will get in. It's to keep a construct. It's to keep the keep things working the way they are. Mm-hmm. To keep uh, certain people relegated to the bottom of the pyramid. That's why the gatekeepers are there. It it was a situation where I gave him his next script. It was back on the block, back in the neighborhood. Yeah, perfect situation. Um, and it was a great. It was, it's a great movie. And right. Once again. More notes, more notes, more notes. They all stupid. Nah, they that. don't make sense. Forget that. All stupid. And then John Witherspoon passes away mm. after a year and a half of going back and forth with these people. Big three. Yep. Six seasons. Congratulations. Thank you, man. We had a great time last night in mm-hmm. uh, Brooklyn. The Barclays. A lot of OGs came out. Melly Mel and uh, Grandmaster Flash. Karis One. Eric B. Chuck chill out. That's dope. You know, it was it was dope. I uh, seen Ja Rule before. Ja Rule got down, Scarlet. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So it was a uh, lot of love celebrating the 50th anniversary of hip hop. Nice crowd, you know, about 9,000 people. So, you know, it was pretty amazing. What did the 50th anniversary of hip hop mean to Ice Cube? Man, it means that, uh, you know, we've come a long way. I remember the first, you know, year of hip hop or, you know, really rap. Mm-hmm. Now hip hop is more is bigger than just rap, but I remember, you know, rap particularly was, you know, the first year it came out, uh everybody was saying it was a fad, you know, it wouldn't last. And um forty nine years later, it's the biggest music in the world. So Absolutely. Absolutely. it's a proud, proud moment. You know, it's similar to the big three. When they when when you started with the big three, everybody thought it was gonna be a, a fad and yeah. you're six years later. So so let's talk about that. Because yeah. you know, we kinda seen the inception of, of the big three. How how has it been since then? Is it is it difficult to get players? It, what, let's talk about some of the, the difficulties in well first, having your own league. First I appreciate you guys always supporting, you know, from, from year one before y'all even knew what it was, you guys were supporting the league, having us on and talk about it and you know, we we put fifteen thousand people in the Barclays year year one when mm-hmm. we had Allen Iverson, and so you know, other than than you know, really not getting much exposure from mainstream sports media, you mm-hmm. know, that's really the problem. And and also, you know, there's things that's happening behind the scenes when it comes to. Um, sponsors and networks and and partners to partner with the big three we think we're we're running to a lot of interference from the nba um a lot of deals you know make it to the 11th hour and then get shut down you know and so it's uh it's frustrating Mm -hmm. it's something that we were like suffering in silence because we wanted to work it out with the NBA. You know, we wanted to figure out, you know, what more could we do to show that we're not competition. Now, the whole problem is um, there's a bylaw in, in the in the NBA contracts when you're an owner saying uh, you cannot invest in a competing league. Mm-hmm. And so they're labeling the big three as a competing league. Mm-hmm. Now, That's good, though, right? Hell no. no. I mean, for y'all, right? No, it's not good. Okay. It's not good because can't invest. we're not competing. Mm-hmm. You know, they 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 make billions every year. You know, we're we're still trying to you know get the the uh, league into profitability. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Excuse me if I can't pronounce that. I'm so with the L.A. Unified School District. So <laughs> so um, we're still trying to get there, and we're just close. You know, sponsor two away. But at the end of the day, um, we're not competing. We play in the summer. Um, if they work with us, we would avoid all the games that they have, you know, far as uh, WNBA or yeah. Summer League, but mm-hmm. they're not working with us, so we can't coordinate schedules. So we, you know, we've tried to do everything to show that we're not competing. We, we don't take uh, players under 22, so – 
We're not going after you know your one and dones, your guys that need to really be in the NBA or going to the NBA. Um, and you know we we try not to to interfere with the NBA's schedule in any kind of way. So we're an alternative summer um, sport that that uh, you know people that like hoops you know want to see more basketball. That's what we provide. They're playing five on five. We're playing three on three. Mm-hmm. It's apples and oranges. It's a totally different game when you really break it down. It would make sense to me for the NBA to do like a strategic partnership with, with y'all. It makes sense to me too, yeah. man. And you know, that's what we've been trying to do. Um, I think what it is really, at the end of the day, you know, everybody can 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 put race on it, but I think it's the fact that we we changed the game mm-hmm. without asking their permission. Right. And I don't think they like it. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm just speculating. You would have to ask Adam Silver, Mark Tatum. Um, but we changed the game, but we do what's best for our game to make three-on-three three exciting. You know what I'm saying? We got the four-point shots. We got uh, bring the fire rule, one-shot free throws. All these things speed up the game, make it faster, make it funner to, to watch and play. So... You know, we're changing the game just to make it better for our sport. We're not, um, you know, trying to push the NBA, even though they do follow some of our leads. You know, we were the first to um, to recognize mental health and to recognize that, uh, you know, players shouldn't be shunned because they might have an issue. You know, let's try to work through it. Let's try to help them through it. Uh and we embrace players, and and they had to do it. You know, if you remember, they've they've you know shunned a lot of players because they didn't want to deal with them mentally. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you know, we pushed them in that. Uh, we was the first league to allow a CBD use, which got players off of opioids. Mm-hmm. Um, they had to follow that. So it's um, you know, it's, it, we're we're changing the game and mm-hmm. trying to make it better. And um, I'm pretty sure they don't like that. But, you know, we don't care. You know, they they don't own basketball. Like, I say this over and over. I don't hear kids saying, Mama, I want to go outside and play NBA, you know. Right. They go and say, I want to go out and play basketball. Yeah. So basketball is for everybody and anybody. And, um, and so we just want to say we're not a competing league. If they would – not put us in that category. Now, they don't do that to TBT, which is the basketball tournament. Mm-hmm. They don't do that to Slam Ball, which is coming back. Mm-hmm. NBA owners can own a pickleball league. They can own an NFL team. They can own a baseball team. They can own anything they want except the big three. Mm. You know, so we're the, you know, one of the only leagues that are so-called competing, and we're not. So we want well, them to drop teams. the claws. I was going to ask you that. I know well, last time you were up here, you were saying that you, at, you, you didn't sell the franchises as of yet. Are, are you starting to sell the franchises yet? Yeah, we're starting to sell teams. Who um, own teams, if anybody, so far? Well, we right now we're talking to a few different uh, people and groups about buying teams, and we want to put them in cities. So, uh, you know, you'd have, you know, for lack of a better word, you know, New York Trilogy, you know, um, you know, Baltimore Ball Hogs, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's our our next phase. That that to me is how we grow the league. We've calibrated it to the point. You gotta remember we were inventing a sport at the same time as we were playing the sport. So we had to calibrate it over the years and make sure that the rules work. There was ways to come back from large deficits. Um, we we made wrinkles that made the game interesting and fun, mm-hmm. and um, and and so we believe that the game is in a good place, and now it's time to sell the teams to owners who have their own vision for for their three on three uh, team. How do the players work? So you know, two questions actually. One, do the players reach out to you guys, or do you reach out to the players, and then? How do you decide what player goes to watch team? Because I've been to a yeah. couple of games. Of course, I went to the, the when Allen Iverson played and a couple of others. But how did it, how do you decide? Like so, let's, you know, player that just retired or, or doesn't want to play in the NBA wants to play in your league. 
how do y'all decide what team he goes to? And Well, you know, we look at, first of all, players contact us, and, we, of course, we go after players uh, who we think will be great for the league. Um, we, we, we usually, you know, have a player captain spot uh, or, or co-captain spot. And if we only have co-captain spots, we'll try to pair this player up with the with the with the captain because the captain chooses who's on their team. So, you know, people want guys that they know can play. So it's usually not hard to find a place for uh you know a a new player that's coming in. Uh, so, but how it works, the player captain, the captain of the team gets to pick who he wants to play with. So he picks a, two co-captains. So, you know, guys know how guys play, and it's like, yo, if I play with him, I can win. And then they draft two more players. So we have a draft pool, have a, uh, you know, lottery. Mm-hmm. So you who picked first, second, third, whatever. And then they pick the players they want. And those players play. And then, And if anybody get hurt, you just return back to the draft pool and you, they pick another player um, from the draft pool until the injured player comes back. So there's always a pool of players waiting to get called up to play in the big three. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Now, and I heard you on Joe Rogan, and you, you said the NBA is encouraging people to not sponsor the big three and encouraging networks to not play the big three. Isn't that a lawsuit if you can prove it? It is. You know, it's, it's, it's antitrust that they're um, – that they're participating in, mm-hmm. you know, when you, um, you know, try to to uh, keep a monopoly running by by uh, you know going behind the scenes and scaring either companies that you work with um, or companies that want to work with you. Um, yeah, they are. They are. You know. Um, very close to if they haven't already crossed the line mm. with that. And uh, I think it should be looked into what they're doing to the big three because, you know, they've they've scared off some big companies who who deal in basketball. Now you gotta understand the basketball pool of companies that use basketball to promote is not big. You know, it's a small pool of companies. So it's not like you know, uh, even networks. Mm-hmm. You know, if you think about all the networks that play basketball, there's ABC, ESPN, ESPN. there's TNT, C- TNT mm-hmm. and, and right now CBS. Mm-hmm. Uh, you got any more? No, I mean locals, like you know, like here. Okay, like here, so yeah. so <laughs> them the major networks. Mm-hmm. So you start running out of people to go to yeah, no real um yeah to uh, uh, if they're blocking now we got our games half of our games on cbs but we got a whole nother half of games right now on big3.com we on uh masson if you got that at mid-atlantic uh uh sports network uh but you know we should be on um another network uh with our with the second half of our games um and We've known that they've um, squashed one deal, um, and so you know, same thing with a, with a few other major companies that deal in basketball. So we just got to get them to stop that part. How do they do that? Like, how do they squash a deal? Like, what do they say to these networks? We, I mean, <laughs> I don't know what they say. I ain't in the room, but I know we're usually close to the finish line with a deal. And then there's a, a call or a conversation about we need to work something out with the NBA or we're not going to have to do this deal. Mm-hmm. So, you know, that's happened several times. And, um, you know, it's it's just starting to get to a point where something's got to give, you know. So um, we're going to keep pushing. Um you know, it might be something that D- DOJ might want to look into because mm-hmm. it's not right what they're doing. Now, calling them out, has it made it worse or, or is it just the same? As you see, you know, more backlash from it? Um, 
it's hard to calibrate. You know, hate is hate. So I don't know if it's more hate or less. Mm -hmm. That part really <laughs> don't matter to me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, at a certain point, you got to go on the offensive no matter what the consequences are. You can't just sit back and take it right. and uh, not and not try to defend yourself and and um, fight for your rights. So I don't really care what they're doing behind the scenes because they haven't been able to kill us. We're still alive. Right. Had 9,000 people on a Sunday afternoon that sat for six hours to watch Big Three basketball, mm -hmm. and they had a party. You know, we had KRS-One mm -hmm. performing and Ja Rule, and, you know, it was a great time. MOP came through. Um, and performed Scarlet and salute to, to those folks and all the OGs that came that, right. that made the celebration great. I wonder what the NBA wants from the big three. Like, like, like what would, what's their ultimate goal? They just want y'all, they want to shut y'all down? Probably or? so. They would and, be and happy. If, the, when we say the NBA, isn't the NBA a collective of owners? So it's a collective of owners that's... No, because the owners, some owners want to invest in the big mm -hmm. three. We've mm -hmm. heard from them. They, they're not allowed to. Mm. So I say it's the top brass because the players like us. They love us, of course, because we're providing opportunities for their heroes and could be opportunity for them in the future. Of course. So coaches like us. Um, GMs mm -hmm. have been to our games. Scouts. Um, owners. Mm -hmm. Everybody you can name. And so... It's the top brass is the only ones because Adam could say um, Big Three is exempt from this bylaw because they're not a competing uh, league. Now, it's not just the NBA owners that get tainted. Mm -hmm. It's anybody with money that has a dream to own an NBA team. So if I dream to own the Nuggets one day, mm -hmm. I can't invest in the big three because it's gonna show me. It, it 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 squashes my dream right there. You don't wake up saying I want to own a big three team. Not yet. You right. will give me you know ten years. Have you have you had a conversation with Adam at all? Several, about several. I've had. How, how's the conversations went? Well, I haven't had a conversation since we launched the league. Um, but he was aware that you would launch the league. We went to him. Mm -hmm. We went to him. We actually offered the NBA. 10% of the league for free um, because, you know, we're using a lot of their players, former players. Yeah. We wanted some kind of um, working relationship. So they they didn't want it, um, and we just told them we was going to do it anyway and and that they wasn't going to stop us because we we kind of know how they operate, you know. I would think from, they would from, want From that. previous sense, uh, yeah. encounters. After six seasons, y'all showing success. I can even see during All Star Weekend having a big three, you know, with the OG players versus the OG yep. players. Like all of that makes perfect sense to me. Like I think about four days ago, five days ago, yeah. you made a post on your page yeah. about just like gatekeeping. Mm -hmm. Was that gatekeeping in sports, in entertainment, or just period? Well, you know, I'm dealing with sports and entertainment yeah. at this moment. Right. <laughs> you know, at this moment, we got a league, and this is like. This is not my my project. Yeah. Like the big three is not a project. Yeah. It's a league for everybody. Right. Like anybody that is bored with summer sports, this is a league for you. Uh so I'm putting this on for 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 the culture, so to speak. Yeah. Not only for our culture, but for sports culture. And the summer sports are whack. So when you're trying to do that and you have mainstream outlets, yeah. sports outlets, basically ignoring what you're doing. Now, mm. people might be like, Q, you know, that's big three, is new, whatever. But if you're looking at the ratings, you're really looking at our ratings compared to other sports that get attention, Yeah, we do better than uh, NHL. Yeah. We do better than Major League Soccer. And ratings, but we get no coverage. Hmm. And so um, the reason we don't get coverage is it's not because, you know, they don't want to cover us. It's because they've been told not to cover us. Hmm. See what I mean? 
They've been told not to cover us. By who? We believe it's the um, the the corporate suits in the NBA. Mm. They, I guess, they consider you a competitor. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they do. We're not. I'm pretty sure it's a totally different they season, do. but yeah, but but we're not. And regardless of we're a competitor or not. What does that got to do with, what does ESPN got to do with that? Mm. What does mainstream uh, sports media got to do with whether the NBA is competing with us or not? Yeah. You know, they should be covering sports. You know, how you going to be the worldwide leader in sports and you're covering drone races and shit, you know what I'm saying, and and crazy ass, um, you know, um, all kind of different. I don't want to diss nobody with their yeah. drones. You know, the <laughs> drone race. Yeah. You know, don't get me wrong. All the drone people, you know, sit the f- back. But, <laughs> but, uh, but I'm just saying. You know, you're covering these, you know, um, eye sports, but you won't cover, um, you know, Dr. J winning the game as a coach, or yeah. you won't cover, um, you know, Joe Johnson going for thirty. You won't cover it. Like, these are not nobodies. Yeah. They're so, very respected people. Yeah. In the game of basketball. Yeah. So, um, it just shows it just shows what they all about. And the NBA does have that power over sports media because we're seeing them use it against us. Got it. Um, they want to cover us. That's the thing. They're told not to. Mm-hmm. Um NBA players want to, you know, now, when I say we, we got an issue with the NBA, it's not the players. Yeah. Players love us. Uh, owners love us. Right. A lot of owners want to invest in the league. Mm. Um, but there's a bylaw that they're holding us to, but they don't hold no other league to. Like, they say you can't invest in a competitive league. Okay. But they're investing in TBT and slam ball, and you can invest in pickleball. NBA NBA owner can invest in the NFL, Major League Baseball. Um, they can invest in uh, uh, soccer, NASCAR. They can invest in uh, pickleball, lacrosse, whatever. Only league they can invest in is the big three. Now, you tell me what's wrong. Is it the shoes? What is it? You know what I'm saying? What's wrong with the big three? Why can't they invest in the big three? And they want to. Big owners, you know, big names. Name them all. I'll say um, most of them are really interested in investing in the big three uh, and have, um, you know, told us that, you know, throughout these six years. And so uh, we think it's bull- mm. that they got this on us and they don't have it on no other league. And, um, you know, that's why I'm speaking out. You know what I mean? That's, you know, gatekeeper shit to me, you know. Have they ever, like, have you, did they, like, decline a meeting? Like, you know, have you Who? tried to meet with them to, like, yeah, try to clear met the- with them? Okay. We met with them before we even started it. Mm. You know, we... We actually tried to get them a percentage of the league for free. And um, they said no. They said no, we don't want it. And and they said if we had it, we would have to run it. And I'm like, no, because y'all, y'all wouldn't know what y'all was doing with this. Mm. So um, so they would only take it like, if they had control. Yeah, they would only take mm. it if they had total control. And we wasn't doing that because, like I said, if they knew how to do this, they would have did it 30 years already. ago. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? So this, this we, we know how to do this. And so, you know, the, we left the meeting and it was cool. And they, you know, it was like, good luck and, you know, all that stuff. You know, the more basketball, the merrier, all that shit they was talking. And, you know, every, every since, you know, the league really started to, Get rolling. Yeah. See, they thought it was going to be some bull. Mm. To be honest, they just thought it was going to be some little weekend that, you know, 
wasn't professional and wasn't um, visibly, um, you know, next level. It's and interesting because so, you called it a project. Like you said, it's not a project. So I feel like someone has told you that before. No, I, I no, nobody's ever okay. told me that. Okay. What I'm just saying is, you know, people may look at it like that. Mm. Oh, there's some cute doing, but but it's some. I'm I'm not doing it for me. It's yeah. like a movie. I don't do them, so I watch them. I right. do them for everybody else to enjoy. Right. You know what I'm saying, and it's the same thing. Same with music. Same um, with with the TV. You know, I do hip hop squares or whatever. Yeah. It's, it's for the people. This is another thing for the people. So, to me, when they deny the big three, they're denying everybody. You know, it's like a mm-hmm. Friday situation where, you know, they got the power within each other to hold stuff back or let things grow. Yeah. And, and, um, and they're using it against the big three. Look, we're prevailing without it, but... Why should we just, you know, suffer in silence and shit? You know right. what I mean? Why should we not let people know what, you know, what what's being done from the uh, NBA office? Right. Uh, players love us. GMs come to the games. Coaches, owners, you know, everybody like us and love us, but except Adam Silver and, and, and Mark Tatum. You know, them two, you know, they the ones who got it out for us. And they talk all that shit. You know, you put Black Lives Matter on the court. But how do how do you feel in your heart? Mm. The court. Yeah. The court. We don't need that bull. How do you feel about us in your heart? Because you trying to squash the only black league in America. Yeah. Why? Yeah. And it doesn't even compete with, like, the season times. Like, I just, I don't really get it. It don't make crazy man sense. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? So, you can't even make crazy man sense. You way, you way out there. Yeah. It's another tip. You know, it's something else. You know what I mean? Right. So, um, and look, they may think, you know, uh, Ice Cube, you know what I'm saying? We're going to get his They ain't getting me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Who they getting? Iceman George Gervin, Rick Barry, uh, Gary Payton, Steven Jackson, right. uh, you know, you know, the Hall of Famers, Nancy Lieberman, <laughs> Lisa Leslie. Yeah. That's who they getting. You know, they getting the players that the and and the coaches and the people that depend on the big three have a little more change in their pocket in the summer, you know what I mean? And they depriving a lot of athletes who, you know, they don't have no room for them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They ain't got no place for these dudes to go or play. So, um, you know, they throw, throw them out, and, you know, if you ain't had a big enough name, you're just done. And yeah. so these guys are playing all over the world, overseas, and they deserve to be able to play at home in front of their own family, friends, you know what I'm saying? When was the last time you seen a Puerto Rican basketball game or Chinese basketball game? Yeah. Like, it gets no coverage here. Yeah. Nobody get a chance to see them play. Nobody even know they playing. Right. You know, but in the big three, you do, because we on CBS nationwide. Um, and, a, and they get opportunities – off of being in the big three. So when we not playing, they do get contracts to uh, go to other places. Okay. You know, some some guys that you know nobody might have seen or known are now getting opportunities. Our coaches are getting commer- commercials and, you know, back in the spotlight stuff. So it's really important that the league survive. And the NBA, you know, is crushing um, – not only the people I mentioned, but all the people that eat off the league. You know what I mean? Yeah. We we feed a lot of people um, with the league just by, you know, coming here. It's jobs, you know, in Dallas, people getting paid that live here. Yeah. That's going to help us in the American Airlines Center on Saturday. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So 
we we it's it's more than me. You know what I'm saying? It's like they crush it or or keep doing what they're doing and and not let it flourish. Then you know you know they talking shit about me, but I'm gonna be fine. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I still I'm, I pay all these people, so yeah. You know, obviously, I got the means to do that, and I'll just go and continue to, you know, do what I'm doing, and and those people will be out of a, a job and livelihood uh, and money that they need. So, you know, I want I just want people when I say this is the the gatekeepers podcast tour, you know, this is testimony. You know, people think I'm about to go mention some this one and that one and conspiracy theories and no I'm telling you what I know about what's going on with me right. now the key is who's your f-ing gatekeeper you mm. know what I'm saying that's who we all gotta find out who gatekeeping you from your life mm. and 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 those are the people that that we gotta get them out the way or get them keys out their hand for the gate The real estate market often seems like a distant world where only an elite of experts is successful. In a time of so much uncertainty in the air and bad news, realist investing can seem intimidating. But today, I want to tell you that if you make the right decision today, you can enter the real estate market from the back door. Bad credit record? No credit at all. Do you dread the idea of having a home loan? Do you dream of owning investment properties? You are in the right place and right time because we have created a program which is a tax lien and deed investment online course of only 14 hours. This course is specially designed for people like you who have big dreams. You will learn at your own pace and everything from your home computer. This is your chance. Join our membership for $19.99 a year. What are you waiting for? Visit our website primetimehomebuyerbuyback.org and sign up today for course access.